OK, so next thing I'm going to come on to is how we locate PD um, online. So how we do location of PD on an underground cable whilst it is live. The way we locate on an underground cable is on the other end of the cable. Um, so this is our measurement point. This is where our monitoring system, our test equipment is installed. When we want to do an online location on the other end of the circuit, we install a HFCT in the same way um, that I mentioned earlier on in the presentation. And we connect it to a transponder unit. Now, IPEX transponder unit is called the IPD, the impulse PD device. Transponder unit is connected to the other end of the cable. And on the local end, we can either use our permanent monitoring system or the Leona spot tester by Bauer, which is manufactured by IPEC, but it's IPEX spot testing solution. So we can either use a permanent monitoring system or a portable spot tested tool. Now, when a PD occurs in the cable, as I mentioned, the signal will be traveling in both directions. So both directions away from the PD source, the signal travels. So the first thing the measurement device will see is the initial PD that has occurred. Now, at the same time, in this case, because the PD is perfectly in the middle of the cable, uh, which never happens, in the same time, uh, the transponder unit has detected the PD. Now, that transponder unit will trigger on the PD and it will send a large pulse down the cable. So a large pulse is sent down the cable. And again, so from the measurement side, we've seen the initial PD and the large pulse that's come from there. Now, by measuring the time difference between this initial PD and this large pulse gives us the time difference um, from here to here. So the initial PD has traveled this distance and we've detected it. The other PD, which essentially this is replicating a reflection, has traveled up to the transponder and then a large pulse has been sent along the cable. So using TDR, using uh, time domain reflectometry or speed distance time calculations, as long as you know the propagation speed of a cable, which is quite, um, for the sake of online PD measurement, it's quite accurate uh, to about 1% of the cable length, you can roughly estimate the location of the PD based on this transponder um, pulse uh, to about 1% of the cable length, basically. Um, actually, in this case, our transponder has a 10 microsecond delay so that it has enough time to process the data before sending the pulse, enough time to charge the capacitors before sending the pulse down the cable. Um, the pulse is um, essentially, it's like a PD reflection. Um, the pulse is uh, 500 volts, very large pulse, very high frequency, so very low in energy, but very high voltage. So it's very clear to see at the other end of the cable. Now, both of these units will automatically measure each one of these um, signals it receives, and it will receive hundreds per second um, as the PD occurs. It will measure each one of these automatically and automatically create a map of the cable. So this is the result you would get on a spot tester. The system will automatically create a map. So this is distance of the cable here. And here's the last shot of a particular pulse. This is distance of the cable. And so along the cable route, um, the system is able to say, OK, X many meters along the cable. This was PD1. And in fact, the system can detect two PDs at the same time because the location will be different. Now, of course, as you would imagine, the IPD transponder is not as clever as the spot testing or monitoring equipment. So the IPD might trigger on lots of background noise as well. Typically, background noise would be across. Um, it would be random. So it would form across the bottom of this graph here in a random location. But both the monitoring system and the um, and the spot testing unit will run that same decipher algorithm that's used to detect PD. Will run that algorithm on these individual PD pulses that it detects, and it will decide if this is PD or noise. So it will remove actively remove all the background noise, clean up the signal, so that we end up with these very clean graphs of location. And like I said, usually accurate to about one percent of the cable length. So if you've got a 1,000 meter cable, the accuracy will be to about 10 meters, which is usually enough then to locate a joint in the vicinity. That's likely the problem. And so you can repair the joint. So this is a result from a portable test equipment, the Leona. And this is a result from the permanent monitoring system doing what we call auto mapping. So all you have to do to locate PD online is turn the systems on, install the IPD and let it run. The system will automatically map the location of PD activity on an underground cable 
while the asset is live, while the asset is online. Practical example then, PD monitoring. This is the individual PD segment. This is the load information. This is the PD level. And in this example, you can see this PD increasing dramatically. The customer, um, we did an online PD location. So using that sort of method, like I said before, online PD location uh, located to a 10 meter section on a 1,250 meter cable. Issue a report to the customer to recommend. This is the load information, remember. Customer takes a shutdown. Cable gets back on load. The PD has disappeared. That's just a nice example of how practically it works in, in practice. The bits that IPEC do and the bits that the customer does uh, depends upon who we're working with. Quite often in London, for example, we will do the detection with the monitoring system. We'll do the PD location, issue the report to the customer, and then the customer conducts the repair. With some examples, it's done um, locally. Okay, so I'm not going to go into too much detail of our monitoring systems, but the key things here is that in order to effectively de uh, detect online PD, you need to be acquiring data on underground cables. You need to be acquiring data at a very high resolution. 100 mega samples per second, 14-bit resolution is the resolution that IPEC acquires data. And that means that for every single power cycle, we have up to 2 million uh, data points. So for one power cycle, 2 million data points, a resolution of 14 bits, which means that we're able to detect even the smallest um, PD signal. Because we have that high resolution data acquisition, we're able to do fully automated noise rejection and analysis. So our monitoring systems using um, advanced algorithms, which I'll come on to in a moment, are able to differentiate PD from background noise. Biggest problem, and I'll reiterate, in online PD detection, specifically on underground cables, is the level of background noise that occurs. So we do that in two phases. So phase one is that acquisition, 100 mega samples per second, 14-bit resolution. So that digital data, we've got a lot of data for every individual channel uh, detected by the HFCT sensor. The next thing we do then is our decipher algorithm. It comes in two stages. Stage one is the wavelet analysis. Wavelet um, is highly regarded as the, as the sort of best way to pick out these sort of high frequency signals hidden inside the much larger background noise. Um, it's a bit similar to an FFT, but it takes into account the uh, frequency and the time domain rather than just frequency gating or rather than just assessing the signal based on frequency where you would lose that timing aspect. Um, a wavelet um, algorithm takes into account both the frequency and the time domain um, and sequentially processes that data to pick out these PD pulses and preserve the, um, the time um, elements of that so that we're able to further analyze that individual um, segment that's been detected. So the first phase is wavelet analysis. And what that does then is it picks out these signals that are potentially PD. The next stage is the knowledge rules. So built into our system are this experience of 22 years of PD monitoring of cables that we've done. Um, and then we can apply those PD knowledge rules and decide if something, uh, the system can then decide if something is in fact uh, cable PD, is it local PD, is it switchgear PD, and classifies it appropriately. So what that looks like in a, a nice summary example, PD sensors, 100 mega samples per second, 14-bit resolution, large background noise data coming from the HFCT sensor, those underground cables or antennas. We can see this small sharp signal here. We can see another small sharp signal here. The output of the wavelet algorithm preserves that time domain and picks out these higher frequency components, which may be PD. Now, because we've acquired the data at 100 mega samples per second, 14-bit resolution, it means we can measure the rise time, the fall time, the pulse width, the pulse height of an individual PD segment. So for every PD, we have an individual wave shape. So this is 20 microseconds. This is one thousandth of a power cycle. And we can measure the individual PD. So we can, we can look at this and we can quantify. Is this cable PD? Is this switchgear PD? Is this local PD? And PDs have different characteristics depending on the, um, where the PD has come from. So if a PD has come from an underground cable, travel two kilometers, likely it will be of a much lower frequency than it would be of a switchgear. Switchgear PD is much closer, and so it's going to be a higher frequency. So we're then able to quantify the PD. 
Our system has measured the rise time, the fall time, the pulse width, the pulse height of the individual PD. So we can then do quantification. And because we've got all that, we've got individual PDs, we can measure the energy, the count, the magnitude of individual PDs, and we can trend that data over time. And with online PD of underground cables, trending is probably the most important thing that you can do. The absolute magnitude of a PD is relatively, and excuse me for saying this, is relatively meaningless because it depends on where that PD is. And we don't know where that PD is occurring until we try to locate it. So when we're measuring PD, the trends of data are critical to how that PD has changed over, the, over time. And so by permanently monitoring, we're able to measure the trends of PD over time and watch it evolve, watch it change. Of course, you can measure the absolute magnitude uh, from doing a spot test um, as well. And uh, of course, we recommend if you do detect PD doing a spot test that you do another test in regular intervals. OK, so the next few slides, again, uh, just screenshots from our monitoring system of how we pull together the information, calculate a criticality for every different PD. And because that monitoring system, although it makes the decision automatically, so completely automated system, doesn't require a user to analyze the data. Um, although it makes that uh, decision automatically, because we've got that data, the system displays the data to the user. So you're able to see the trends of activity over time. So you can look at this data when the system sends you an alarm, you can look at the data and see what alarm it's created so that before you take action, um, you, can, you can decide um, if you believe the system, if you believe it's made the correct decision. 